this may not be the review for you. If you hate this show, the approach, the themes, the ideas, the performances, and the writing, I kindly, respectfully have one thing to say. Go back to the shadow. Just so you know, the following will be spoiler free. We'll have a separate discussion on spoilers that's long form. There is so much to get into with this show that I think I need to cover a few outside things first. I've said many times that adaptions are fickle things. If you change too much, you alienate. If you don't change at all, you bore. But it's getting to the point in fandoms where everyone is a critic, nothing is ever good, everything is called a cash grab, and there's a general lack of patience with any changes and storytelling in general. Now, this isn't everyone, of course. Legit criticisms can still exist. But we're in the age of, if you don't like this, you're awful. Or if you do like this, you have no taste and you're awful. Or vice versa, and there's no room for disagreement. We're to the point with the internet where not only do I not like it, but you're not allowed to like it. It sucks. And review bombing sucks, and that's what also happened here. Going off of that, I'm a weird case with Tolkien. I grew up with the Rankin Bass, Hobbit, Return of the King movies, and the Ralph Bakshi, Lord of the Rings movie, as well as the main movie trilogy from Peter Jackson. They are my favorite films of all time. My dad is a huge Tolkien fan and acted as an encyclopedia for me growing up to tell me the differences in the books or the Silmarillion. I've read The Hobbit like three times, but I've never gotten around to actually finishing Lord of the Rings, nor have I started the other works. But I've spent a considerable amount of time looking up lore on wikis over the years and having conversations with my dad, so I'm pretty knowledgeable about the universe as a whole, but maybe not as in-depth as somebody who's read the books many, many times. Immediately, that will inevitably make some of you dismiss my opinion, but I still have it. I was so nervous about this show going in, and I have been proven wrong at every corner. I'm in love with it, and I think it's spectacular. Some may disagree with this, but they take the broad strokes of things we know from the Second Age and sort of remix them into their own story. Those saying they butchered them and nothing is right need to see that changes have to be made for certain stories or events to translate well to mediums or give character growth across a five season show. If it takes 70 years to forge a ring, we can't see that because all the other characters other than the elves would die out. Galadriel may have started a little unrecognizable in her character actions, but I promise you by the end, she'll have had an immense rich journey to becoming the Lady of Lorien. And we've already seen pieces of that. Speeding up the timeline makes a lot of sense for a large ensemble, and there's still a lot of mystery left to unpack over the next few years. Lots of setup here to either unfold before the end of the second age or the beginning of the third. So the timeline might get changed a little bit, but it will all basically unfold in the way it's supposed to, largely. And if you hate it for those reasons, then I'd like to question you on other adaptions. Because I'm fairly positive that if the Lord of the Rings movie trilogy came out today, people would attack it like they have this for the changes that it makes. Some did back then, but now they're almost universally beloved. Why is it okay for those changes to be made, but they're not here? I'm okay with the changes. I'm not 100% about every decision, but I'm willing to be patient and find out. The intrigue is there. The changes and additions make sense to me because the essence of the story, the broad strokes, and the spirit of Tolkien are all present, as is the influence of Peter Jackson, all of this in every frame. And if you disagree with that, you're entitled to your opinion, but I do think you're wrong and should reconsider where you're drawing that conclusion from. Everyone was so concerned this would be woke, political, or overtly sexualized, and there is none of that. Just a spectacular story in the richest mythological fantasy world ever created without an ounce of profanity, nudity, sexualization, or allegorical political agendas. You can't convince me otherwise there. Sorry, no room for debate. Anyone that thinks this, no offense, that's a reach. Not to mention, a lot of the decisions seem to boil down to what they have rights to and what they don't, which is a little bit unfortunate, but surprisingly, a lot of the material seems to be, have been pulled from the appendices or Tolkien's unfinished tales, which is really cool and makes me feel a lot better, such as Gladriel's more military backstory and how she was in the Second Age. You can find direct quotes, I'm not going to go to the effort for this video though. The burden of proof isn't on me. I don't think anyone can disagree how remarkable the show looks and sounds. The sweeping landscapes of New Zealand and with excellent direction, cinematography that is gorgeous and cinema quality and a quite literal perfect score from Bear McCreary elevate each and every moment. And I love that Howard Shore came back 
and did the theme. And quick side note, I don't have this scripted, but on the theme song, it's supposed to be the creation of Arda or the creation of Middle Earth and how it was done through music and they use sound vibrations to move all that sound. It's supposed to be representative of that. And I love how they even have the the dark chords or the dark minor music, however you want to say it, that Morgoth introduced into the creation, represented by the visual like blackness goo coming into the dirt and the music gets darker when that happens. It's just little details like that. You can't have that and tell me that they don't care about the lore, that they don't care about the writing or they care about what Tolkien wrote. They do. Moving on, for me, the pacing is what I wanted. Methodical, not rushed, taking its time to develop character and world building. We have five seasons to get there, y'all. Many, many characters are given rich development across lengthy episodes, thankfully, and I never once felt like we were moving too fast, save one spot in the finale that was later explained and justified. And honestly, more happened in this first season to progress that story than I expected to. And the sets, the production design, the costuming are all exquisite. The writing is incredibly strong, the writers doing their best to feel like they're capturing the language of Middle Earth. The dialogue is certainly not token, and some moments may seem more generic than others, but I'd argue it's always admirable in its effort to replicate. The sense of scale is chill-inducing, its breadth and scope only beginning with the magnitude this story will cover. I truly struggle to understand the hate and criticisms here, their sincere emotion, shocking revelations, and some things you see coming as we all theorize, but it's executed with such care and grace that I don't mind. The fact that we have so much to guess upon and theorize about is wonderful. When the battle scenes hit, they were fierce, brutal, and epic, just like I wanted them to be and I forgot how much I missed that kind of thing my kind of spectacle that the Lord of the Rings trilogy did so well. Episodes 6 and 8 I believe are the two standout perfect episodes of this show of this season that really exemplify what I mean in that regard in terms of reveals and spectacle. But the, the outright hate this is getting just doesn't make sense to me from some of the fandom. Complaints about a lack of character development are categorically false. Bad acting complaints may be a preferential thing even though I would disagree. But to say the writers don't care and just want to play fast and loose with the mythology for a cash grab is reductive and untrue. A hundred million people have already watched, so I expect there's a lot more fans than the loud ones who don't like it. And if you feel some of those things, that's fine. I just want to hear very specific reasoning and it may come down to, we just see it differently. And let me be clear, if you don't like it even for those reasons I mentioned, that's okay. Everyone has their opinions and are entitled to defending them. I just ask that if you do feel that way, I ask for fair, balanced, and consistent criticism to them. I'm finding the diehard book fanatics are struggling with the changes, but not all, so there's even divisiveness there. Just take it from me. It's an alternate universe from the books that set before the movies and it's going about its own way to tell the second age story. Not everything will match up perfectly to the books, but if it doesn't alter the story in a major way, why does it matter? Middle Earth Shadow of War the video game did this and told a phenomenal original story that added so much to me, even though it played a little fast and loose. It's not like Gladriel having struggles with her loss and a sense of revenge makes her any less of the powerful figure she is when she meets Frodo. The timeline and details can be different while the thousand foot view can be largely similar with the same end goal, y'all. I shouldn't have to defend this so hard, and I'm guessing there's many, many more people that love it like me. Some close friends of mine who all love Token love this. If the show does break canon in such a way that the legacy of the story becomes disrespected and perverted, I'll join in on the outrage. There's even a couple spots I'm not too sure about right now, that if they go a certain route that I think they're gonna go, I'm not sure how I feel about that. But for now, The Rings of Power is epic unprecedented television that I believe will change the medium when we examine the production quality and effort that went into it. I loved everything about it and I'm excited for the future while remaining uncertain and or curious about certain plot points. It's just great to be back in Middle Earth and with so many theories to boot. I give The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, Season 1, 5 out of 5 stars. I have a spoiler discussion coming very soon, maybe even a live stream, so stay tuned for that and we can get into more of the details. Subscribe to find out when that's coming. And remember, as you watch this video, or the show, or consider your disagreement or agreement, always look for the good. 